What is going on folks? I'm Des with Desfit and this is the Amazfit Stratos. So this watch is exciting because it offers more advanced fitness features like first speed technologies all at a budget price point. And I'll tell you that it shines in some areas, it's decent in others, but then does have some areas that could use some improvement. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that I did purchase this product at full price with my own money and I was not given this device for review. And I try to test devices long term, which does take a lot of time, so if this video does help you out at all, please hit that like button below. It definitely helps the channel out a lot and I definitely appreciate it. But now let's get into it. So the biggest thing that stands out immediately is going to be the design and build quality, especially at this price point. The Gorilla Glass display held up for me really well, even with a handful of mountain bike crashes, and I only got one very faint scratch on this glass. The bezel did get a slight nick on it as well, but considering I crashed about 3-4 to four times with this watch on, I'm pretty impressed and the carbon fiber body held up perfectly fine. The watch body itself is great, but I don't feel like the strap necessarily matches the same fit and finish as the case. It's not a bad strap by any means, but since this is a standard 22mm strap, there will be tons of options out there. It is very comfortable to wear, but do check out my video on the size of the Stratos compared to other watches in the market. The transflective display is bright and very readable in direct sunlight, but it can be a little bit reflective in certain lighting conditions, and it is definitely a fingerprint magnet. And then just like other transflective displays, it's going to be much more optimized for outdoors than indoors. However, it does have a backlight. Now, it does have that small bump on the bottom of the display, and from what I've seen in the comments, is definitely a love or hate sort of thing. The touchscreen isn't too sensitive, and I'm actually saying that as a positive because it doesn't result from accidental swipes or touches, and the touchscreen can lock after a few seconds, and then you can press the power button to unlock it. The stainless steel buttons are fairly positive, and the feedback is pretty good, although I'd prefer them to probably be a little bit stiffer. On the back of the watch, we have the charging points along with the optical heart rate sensor, which does protrude slightly from the back of the watch, but I didn't notice it at all when I was wearing it. It charges in about an hour from empty via a little brick thingy that I thought was kind of weird to have to squish your watch in there. And then for battery life, I was really surprised at this. I easily got 4-5 to five days out of this thing even with continuous heart rate on and typical GPS usage of about an hour per day. And then here's an example of a longer activity where we were out on the trail for over 5 hours and it only lost about a quarter of the battery from a full charge early in the day. But I will say, initially, battery life wasn't as good, but some firmware updates did help improve that over the last couple of months, which is great to see. The interface is going to be somewhat of a mashup of a few different interfaces where you'll swipe left and right on the touchscreen for widgets, and then you can also use the button interface with the device. And it's a little bit quirky in a few different areas, which I'll bring up a little bit later. But what I do like about this interface is that they provide alternatives to using the touchscreen, where you can actually use the touchscreen or the buttons in most situations. You can swipe left or right on the touchscreen, or you can use the top and bottom buttons instead. And then you can start an activity by using the touchscreen, or you can just press either the top or middle button, which makes it nice when you have gloves on. And then finally, you'll swipe down from the top to get to your settings, and then swipe up from the bottom to get notifications, which is similar to a lot of other watches, which brings us up to these smartwatch features. Now, this is definitely more of a fitness watch than a smartwatch, and it's pretty apparent even when you start to look at the stock interface, where it has fitness functions immediately to the left, which I'll go over in more detail here in a second, but to the right, you'll have your heart rate, then you'll have a music widget, alarms, weather, compass, stopwatch, sleep, and then a training widget. You do get one-way notifications that you can dismiss but you can't reply to, and then you'll also get call notifications but you won't be able to speak directly from the watch itself. And then there's an onboard music storage and playback, which does not have streaming servers, but you can store non-DRM tracks on the device. I didn't have any issues pairing Bluetooth headphones, however, I did find the volume to be a little bit low. And I'm curious if anybody else encountered that as well. But now let's get back to the widgets on the left. So all the way to the left is where you're going to find the daily overview where it provides a ton of data. And then there's also a really nice looking weekly report. There's a ton of data in here, which is pretty neat. And then for the daily stuff, I found that the steps to be a little bit low, but not bad by any means. And then sleep tracking was pretty good, and maybe not as detailed as some others, but it actually tracked me going back to sleep for a couple hours here where the Garmin didn't. And then it'll have your activity history with cumulative totals, training load, and then individual activity history. And then from this screen, you can also see your VO2 max. And obviously that's not accurate, but we will look at this a little bit later in the video. So when you first launch the sports widget, it shows your full time to recovery. So I think that's kind of neat to have there right there on the screen. But below it will also show your two last used activity profiles. And then if you press the more button, it shows the remaining battery as well as the estimated time in GPS mode. And then it shows the full list of activity profiles. 
Now, there's no way I could go through all of these, but I'm gonna hit some highlights. So for the outdoor run profile that uses GPS, there's a running train option for intervals, which you will set up in the smartphone app. And then in settings, you can choose a training target, different alerts, including laps, heart rate, heart rate zones, auto lap, and pace. But as some others have noted, there is no auto pause feature available for any activity profile. So you can use the middle button or top button to start the activity from the start screen. But when you start the activity, the middle button then turns into scrolling through the data fields and then the bottom key is the lap key, which is pretty standard. But then you'll use the top button to stop or pause the activity. So it can be just a little bit confusing there. Okay, so now onto the data screen. So there's actually gonna be a wealth of data that you can have available here and you can use both the touch screen and the middle button to scroll through the pages. And there's also gonna be a heart rate widget which shows a real-time graph as well as a GPS route for most outdoor activities. And what I do find neat about this is that both the GPS route and heart rate actually time out to a different screen that probably saves on battery life so it doesn't have to draw a map nor a chart. And then in terms of customization, you can choose between a six or four field layout from the watch itself in the other settings. And these do seem to be customizable per profile. And these do not appear to be global settings, which is nice. However, this setting only seems to apply to the first screen because you'll see here that we have a six field layout on the first screen and then four fields on the second and third. Now, if we switch to a four field layout, then it switches up the remaining data to five fields on both the second and third screen, which is kind of interesting. Now, you do have control of what fields you want to appear from the smartphone app. If you go into the profile tab, then into my watches, then choose sport from the app settings. And here's where you can set up your interval workout, by the way. And then you can go into each workout profile and choose which fields you'd like to see and the order. And then the run profile will be similar to cycling, but now let's take a look at swimming where you can set your pool size from predefined lengths as well as custom length. And then you can also start the activity, which will give a countdown timer. And then this touchscreen will lock to prevent accidental presses or swipes. And then pretty standard where you use the bottom key for a lap key and then you'll also have a data page for pace. It does also have an open water profile which works very much the same but also has a data page for the GPS route. Now, as you may have noticed, this isn't necessarily a comprehensive list of activities, but I was actually quite surprised to learn there's gonna be some context sensitive options and data available for some of these profiles. And at this price point, I thought that these profiles would just be a carbon copy of one another and then all of them would provide really the same functionality and data, but there's actually some thinking here. Like the climb profile, which has a separate data page for altitude along with a graph, which is kind of neat, along with the GPS route. And then skiing has a speed widget. And then for tennis and soccer, I'll be perfectly upfront with you. I thought these were just placed in there just to have in there, but these two were kind of interesting. For tennis, it'll actually ask you which hand you use with your racket when you first launch the profile. And then it even gives you stroke data, like how many strokes with your forehand, backhand, serves, as well as the percentage. However, it does not provide GPS distance. But for soccer, it does. And I found the distances to be pretty close, even with a lot of back and forth movement. And then it'll also give you this option to start the second half when you press the pause or stop key. So that's neat to see that tennis and soccer aren't just a copied and renamed workout. And finally, it does have a triathlon profile, which is basic, but does get the job done. And you'll hold down the upper button to initiate the transition, and then you'll short press it again to end the transition to move on. So although it comes with probably what could be viewed as a smaller list of activity profiles, there actually is some thinking here in regards to how each profile is set up. But like others have said, it is kind of a bummer that it does not come with more gym-based profiles where if you are doing something like weight training, you'll have to choose a different profile like elliptical. But now let's talk about the hardware in terms of how it's gonna perform as an activity tracker. And that's gonna be the GPS, the altimeter, the accelerometer, and the heart rate. So for GPS, I was incredibly impressed. I mean, seriously. First off, GPS acquisition was really quick for me, never taking more than 15 to 20 seconds to acquire and oftentimes only taking around five to 10 seconds. Distances were very accurate, whether it was really short or really long. And it also laid down some really good tracks. And in the two months of testing, I never really had it fail once. Really good stuff here. And switchbacks are really good. It tracked pace really good. And overall, I just had no complaints here. And then in terms of the altimeter, same thing, where it was consistent with every other test device. And I only had one occasion where it was a little bit off. But still, it was very, very good in tracking elevation. The accelerometer was pretty good for the most part. It did collect very good cadence and stride length. However, strangely, it wasn't terribly accurate for me tracking indoor running distances. So even after running outside a handful of times just so it can learn my running dynamics, it wasn't able to produce a treadmill distances with much accuracy even after a treadmill calibration, which it can do. However, for swimming, it did produce some really good results. But now on to heart rate, and you're gonna see a mixture of both screenshots from the smartphone app, as well as detailed analysis using a more advanced comparison tool, because you can export GPX files for most outdoor activities, but you can't for indoor activities. 
But first off, it does not collect heart rate in the water. But for the rest of the activities, heart rate was interesting. Sometimes it was extremely good like this lower intensity treadmill run. It locked on almost the entire time and produced a really good result compared to a chest heart rate strap. But then on some higher intensity runs, it didn't do so well. And on one occasion, although it followed the trend, it was low the entire time. And in this next example, it started out pretty good, but then started to trail off a little bit, had a period where it was low, but did sort of catch back up at one point. And then for cycling, most wrist-based heart rate sensors don't do so well with this type of activity, but the Stratos did produce some good results on some smoother terrain and lower intensity rides, but was about the same for more intense outdoor rides, especially when the terrain got rough. For example, on this lower intensity road ride, it was quite good with just a couple hiccups. But then on higher intensity rides, like this one going up a canyon, you'll see that it was quite good for the first part of the ride, but then as soon as I started to descend this hill, it didn't track the sudden fall on heart rate, but then caught back up when the grade leveled out. It was a bit erratic for a bit, but then did lock back on at the end of the ride. But then we look at this indoor ride where it was quite good overall and did produce a very usable end result, so I think wrist movement can really affect the accuracy. For weight training, this was about the same as most other wrist-based heart rate sensors for the most part and didn't really know what was going on, but this is very typical. However, elliptical did produce some really good heart rate. So heart rate was kind of hit and miss for me. Sometimes it was awesome, sometimes it wasn't. And in general though, it'll probably work better for lower intensity activities or activities that don't involve a lot of wrist movement. But that brings us to the first beat technologies, including training load, training effect, recovery time, and VO2 max. So for someone to utilize the first beat technologies properly, you're gonna need accurate heart rate. So if you have too low heart rate, which I did encounter on some occasions, then you'll get too high a VO2 max. Then when it comes to your training effect, it won't give you an accurate estimate, and then subsequently your recovery time may not be enough. But you can pair this with a Bluetooth external heart rate strap to deliver more accurate results from the settings of an activity profile, which will then get you more accurate estimates. And then if you are using an external heart rate strap, these performance metrics will be a lot more valid, and that way you won't be seeing data that could be inaccurate due to an abnormally low or high heart rate. Now, in regards to the smartphone app, it's not bad, but there's definitely gonna be plenty of opportunities for improvement. It provides a wealth of data here, like for running, it shows your mileage, time, pace, calories burned, a nice GPS map with different colors for pace, your training effect, along with more details like best pace, heart rate zones, cadence, gradient changes, laughs, and then really nice looking graphs for heart rate, speed, cadence, and more. And then for indoor activities, it obviously has a little bit less to display, but for swimming, it does show your pace, laps, stroke type, strokes, stroke rate, and efficiency, as well as some graphs. But like I said earlier, you can't edit any of the details in here and there's gonna be no way to export the data directly from the app. You're only gonna be able to export GPX files through the watches export function where you'll have to plug it into your computer. However, it does have Strava integration. And lastly, I couldn't necessarily find a good place to talk about this, but it does have some basic navigation capabilities, but they are a little bit limited. There aren't any maps, however, there is a compass and then you can import routes and it will give you a breadcrumb style map on certain GPS activities. So what's the verdict? Well, the watch performed really well in a lot of areas. GPS was really good. The altimeter was good as well. The battery life was great after some firmware updates and the fact that it does have first beat technologies, a triathlon mode, Strava integration, as well as a GPX file export was great to see. But then the heart rate was inconsistent for my testing. Sometimes it was locked on perfectly and then sometimes it just wasn't. And that definitely makes it a tough decision depending on what you're looking for. If you're looking for a great looking device but won't be using much in the terms of the fitness features, then this is a great little watch, but just don't expect a full-blown smartwatch. However, if you're looking for a more general fitness device, the heart rate may not quite be there for you, but it does have really good GPS and battery life. And lastly, if you wanna take advantage of the more advanced fitness functions, I'd probably put away a few extra bucks for an external Bluetooth heart rate strap, and that way you could fully take advantage of those features. And then here's one last thing to consider. Take somebody like me. I train quite a bit and use a device that's a bit more expensive than this one and arguably has better heart rate performance. But I still use an external heart rate strap for training because there are just certain types of activities that just don't work well for almost all wrist-based heart rate sensors. And you can pretty much always rely on an external heart rate sensor to deliver more accurate data. So what I think it comes down to is that the Stratos does offer a lot for the money, but it does have a budget price tag, so it's kind of tough to ask for premium performance across the board. However, this is one of those devices that does offer a lot for a little. It's not perfect, but it is pretty darn good for the money. And lastly, I do have to say that I continually saw updates to the app as well as the watch, which did improve some initial issues, so it's nice to see that there are continual improvements. Anyhow, if you did find this video useful, please hit that like button below and also subscribe to the channel for lots more fitness and sports technology reviews coming soon.